What's up, Rockstars? Welcome to another news video where I talk about what's on GameFound, what's on Kickstarter, where you can put your money to, where they're going with the campaign. Some oversight on all of that is coming up right now. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons and YouTube members. It is through their financial support that this channel is possible. They allow me to make the videos that I want to make in the style I want to make them, and that is thanks to the independence that they provide. Knowing that I can rely on them month in and month out throughout the year is incredibly helpful. Again, also thank you to those who supported the fundraiser. You guys are making the viability of this becoming more of a real thing that much more and uh, of, a, of a real thing itself. And I greatly appreciate that as well. As well as a longtime sponsor, you guys know Into the AM, the channel sponsor, they are here month in a month out too because you guys love it, I love it, and they support the style of um, focus that I have when it comes to just knowing that hard work pays off and offering a good product at a good price sells itself. So let's actually talk about that real quick. As you guys know, I wear these all the freaking time. I literally woke up. I didn't even plan to record any videos today. I've actually recorded two now. And uh, yeah, that's in this. So it just so happens to be, I love their shirts. Um, freaking sweet, right? Okay. So uh, I guess I'll show you real quick. There you go. Yep. You guys have seen it. Um, and that's like a mild one. Sorry for the computer chair. Uh, they are doing new ones almost a weekly at this point. I mean, they just are, have so many good ideas. We got a freaking Kraken, you know, like tentacle monster thing coming up. A, a, a lighthouse a, looks freaking sweet. We got this really cool yin yang design, which I really, really dig. You guys have seen the sunflower out of the freaking bomb in space look there. There are some really, really cool stuff. They always are doing this. I mean, just out of this world. You got like the clockwork skull and you got all sorts of stuff. DJ, spaceman. They even have a monthly shirt club that I talk about all the time. That's because it allows you to get really cool shirts. This one, freaking sweet. Probably my favorite one I've seen on there. That being said, you get some cool freaking shirts. These are all past shirts that they've just given out at this reduced price, which is super cool. You get one a month. That's just 12 a year. So it's manageable. You're not spending too much money and you get some cool freaking shirts along the way. So there is a link down below to them and, and a 10% discount code just for you guys. That works on top of sales. It works on top of anything they're throwing at you. That is for you guys as a thank you for the support that you guys have shown them. So thank you so much for that. And thank you into the AM for the sponsorship. Let's get into the news now, okay? Now, with the voice thing. Speaking of which, I have a little bit of a cold, a little bit of a runny nose, a little bit of a cough. Um, I apologize. I've taken medicine. If I, I cough, I'll edit it out and all that stuff. But just apologies in advance for how I sound, which is probably worse than normal, which is uh, saying quite a lot. Boo -whoop. Okay, hey, this is actually much later, but I'm putting this up front. I just got back from the movies. We went and saw Scream. My my wife loves that series, and so it was a fun movie, by the way. Uh, I, here's my proof. They don't make cups this size for any other place but those, I think. That's, that's an insane amount of soda. You shouldn't get that, but whatever. Here I am. Um, guys, there is a actual fundraiser going on right now I wanted to tell you guys about. A patron of mine was generous enough to let me know so I could then let you guys know about this. This is for mental health. This is actually the Mental Health Foundation of New Zealand, and this is sponsored by Black Forge Games, who did um, Tengen and is has another uh, miniature coming out soon. Looks super cool. I've seen it. Can't share it yet, but looks very cool here. Um, this is actually really, really cool. This is um, also with the Loot Dive repeat uh, people. In fact, they are um, talking about PTSD, suicide prevention, really anything that has to do with kind of mental health and, and being aware of that and providing resources for that. So I think that's huge. I've always been a fan of that. I think we need to kind of move past the, the uh, uh, mindset that talking to a therapist is a bad thing or that seeing a psychiatrist is something you shouldn't admit or that you even have to admit it. It, it should just be something that is a, a general, just like seeing a doctor when you need it, you need it. And you know, that's open to you. So I highly encourage you guys that if you have any issues to seek out some resources, if you'd like to donate to this, this will be the top link in the uh, video description here. So if, if you're confused about where you should put your money and all the cool things that I'm about to show, 
this is the number one thing to do for sure, uh, my opinion. And there's some great minis and a lot of supporters coming in already. You can see some of these look awesome. I, was, I mean, fantastic job all around and props to everybody, either donating time, donating miniatures, donating uh, money. It doesn't matter what it is. It's just it's a great thing to do. Um, this, oh man, I love the, the lighting on that one. It looks great. Uh, so for those of you in the USA, which is the most of you, uh, or referencing this time zone, the show will be on Friday, the 28th of January at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So you can set your calendars for that. And there's a whole lot of links where you can kind of, uh, stay up to date. And again, there's a link to this very page down below in the description. Uh, please feel free to click it, read up on it, and see if it's something you would like to give to. Now, let's go ahead and jump into the rest of the video where I'm a little bit more chipper and uh, awake. Let's go ahead and talk Thunder Road Vendetta. I've not shown this one before. It's got 20 days ago, so a long time to go still on this. And it actually looks pretty cool. I've never been big on the racing games, but I'll show you why I think this looks cool. So first of all, I mean, just the theme, it just looks nice, right? Visually, I like the change in the map, right? I really dig that. The colors are simple. The design of the cars are really cool, right? You get to actually like uh, navigate more than just one thing. You have multiple vehicles that you're going through. You can actually navigate around, as you can see, the terrain and stuff like that. So positioning matters. You you can actually attack people, you know, shoot at them. You can even get like uh, aerial bombardments and crap like that, which is just like ridiculous. Um, some of the things you can you can do on this, like like look at this, like exactly. You can just just shoot at people like no none other. But then look at this, they have that system that I really like, the kind of um, continued progress. One of the things I like about this is first of all, you only clear the maps that are, are like, you know, way back, like it doesn't matter, you don't need it on there. I do that with dungeon crawls anyway. Once I get past a certain point, I just start chucking, and I'm not going back there, so it doesn't matter. And then it makes the table footprint smaller. So it's a great thing to do, especially for something like this. But it also means you don't know what's coming up ahead. It's like it's your first time racing in there and so it kind of adds that variety this actually looks pretty legit i think that looks pretty darn cool which is probably why it's already over three hundred thousand dollars funded so they're busy unlocking stretch goals doing all that kind of stuff feel free to take a look at what they have to offer prices and all that i haven't looked too into it but i will be because i do like the idea of all of like everything there sounds cool to me Moving on, we have Marvel Zombies. You guys knew I was going to cover this. I already probably have it in the title. 17,400 backers, 4.6 million rays. Now, this is not no 15 million or some something like that, but it is quite good, obviously, though it's also at a higher price point. In case you didn't know, last I counted of actual backers, in other words, not these backers, but the actual like backers of this, in other words, not $1 backers, all of them adding that extra $30 is half a million dollars more in this that it wouldn't have been if they hadn't increased the price by three uh thirty dollars a pop on the per unit thing that's not including like bundling the x-men stuff and all that so definitely a smart move on theirs to inflate the price a little bit so that people back it at a higher price and make more um the the question remains then if they lost around five hundred thousand dollars from people like me who saw the price and said nope i'll get it retail hard to say um that five hundred thousand dollars is quite a bit of money and it's there's still nine days to go. So it's just probably going to go up as more people pledge into that. And again, if I was to count all 17,000 here, it would be even more for sure. It's at least an extra million. So without that, this would have funded about, you know, 3.6 million probably, at least right now. Assuming nobody backed anything. That being said, this already costs $100 more. So this is now a $510 game. And, uh, nine days to go. So I'm assuming at least double that. So we got the $50 Fantastic Four under Siege. We got the $40 Gardens of the Galaxy set and you have the $10 extra dice. Now, remember that all these unlocks, all these things are Kickstarter exclusive. So if you're buying Guardians of the Galaxy, wanting Guardians of the Galaxy as heroes, well, Drax and Rocket are literally right here as heroes. You're only going to get it in Kickstarter. So they're definitely heavy in the FOMO. So guys, back what you want do what you want with your money of course you guys are all adults and you guys can make your own freaking decision you don't need me telling what to do i would like to remind you though to just make good decisions whatever that might be for you people have different tastes in ip and theme people have different tastes and abilities of storage people play differently some people don't play at all some people play all the time every day it just depends you guys make the decision for you just be aware of what they do right so the inflated price the continued add-ons to slowly increase the price more and more and more 
the selective Kickstarter exclusive heroes and stuff like that from like main core units and stuff like that. Like all that's there to uh, kind of manipulate you and get you to back. Now you might be fine with it without the manipulation. That's fine. Just be aware of it. That's all I'm saying. And that goes for any campaign that does this. It's just with such a, a big IP game. Uh, there's another IP game coming later I'll talk about, but for this one, just sometimes IP gets in the way. Sometimes it doesn't just, just make good decisions. Um, or at least not terrible ones. Uh, so uh, whoever gets it, I hope you guys love it. I'll be backing the retail probably. I'm not seeing anything that's drawn me into the Kickstarter exclusive version for how expensive it is. So I'll be playing the game with you guys just at a reduced scope and reduced price way is, is pretty much all for me, especially with the shipping. How much, like they're unlocking like zombies and heroes and bystanders and like it's just, it's gonna be so many boxes. It's gonna be crazy. Uh, you guys are gonna have to let me know what the shipping ends up being like. Final Girl C Series 2, 8,300 backers, 1.4 million bucks, way surpassed Series 1, the very first Final Girl, and all that means is it was a great game. Now, I've been hemming and hawing about how much of this I want. I'm very new to playing solo, especially something like this, but I do love the theme, and I do have a lot of confidence in this one just because of how many people are backing it, how much money it's raised without an IP or anything like that, or any kind of even like, you know, shadiness or anything like that. This is just straight up, here's more of a great game that you like, and people are coming in droves to get it which tells me that it's probably pretty good. So I definitely want to try it. I might work with a patron of mine to, um, you know, get, get, get just what I want copy wise at, at maybe a price that I feel comfortable diving into. And then, uh, yeah, if I end up enjoying a lot, I'll be there for series three as well. I can always add more to it. Um, I don't know what the retail presence of this is. Um, I have not been to my friend little gaming store in oh, quite some time, and I wasn't looking for Final Girl when I was. I was looking for Warhammer crap because that's that's all I buy at this point right, at retail for the most part. Uh, so either way, I need to pick and choose what I want to do. They're like twenty bucks a pop after the core for the theme. Um, maybe the thing that's that's a fan favorite here, um, but we'll 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 see. I don't know if you were to point to two, um, because I don't even know necessarily besides theme. How different are they? In other words, do they all act the same thing and it's just a different theme, different map? Or is it like, oh, this monster has this unique ability and this unique trait that's different? Like in Zombicide Invader, you have the mold abomination and you have the burrowers that burrow down. And that's like, it's a different take on it while it's the same game. So I need to look into that to see which gameplay might appeal to me. If you guys have a suggestion, though, I'd love to hear it. Uh, I need some guidance on this one for sure. Rampart, budget-friendly wargaming terrain, only 84 minutes to go, so you guys aren't going to get this in time. I've covered it several times before. I actually have an unboxing video of it that's mostly done. I actually need to build it. I've been very busy. I've gotten sick. My kids have gotten sick. We went and got my daughter a COVID test yesterday just to make sure this isn't anything like that, and so she can freaking go to school. That'd be nice, too. So, like, like there's all this stuff that I've been dealing with, so I've been, I, I haven't gotten to it yet, so I'll have it there in the future, I'll show you guys, I'll tell you guys exactly how I think about it, and I'll link to the pledge manager at the time. I won't be able to pledge to this. That being said, Rampart 1.0 was freaking amazing. I have a ton of it, like, right back there. I use it for Warhammer all the freaking time. It looks fantastic. A great price for what you're getting as well. So this comes recommended regardless. All it does is add cooler stuff. It adds you know, floors and ceilings and stuff like that, which sounds freaking awesome. So I'm all about it. So feel free to check this out. Um, if, if, if you haven't, whether there's a pledge manager or not, like just look to see what they have to offer. And, uh, yeah, you'll probably be impressed. Yucatan, 236,000. They're doing quite well. 2,300 backers. Now, this is not maybe the thing you would have thought would have exploded with being designed by the guy who did commit, but it is still doing well. They are unlocking stretch goals. Their stretch goals are interesting, by the way. So if you scroll down here, and again, links to everything down below. I've talked about this game in my previous video uh, more in depth, but look at these stretch goals. Two stretch goals unlocked. And uh, yeah, notice there's like a Kickstarter edition and then a retail stretch goals. Very interesting. I'm gonna have to look more into what that is exactly, how I feel about that. Either way, kind of cool. And in a large part, I think makes sense. It doesn't make sense to, if you're upgrading the card, you know, thickness to print it in two different ones, right? You would just print them all. And then the retail one benefited from the stretch goal one, right? Um, assuming that it's not just a fake stretch goal and you want to print it anyway, but whatever, that's besides the point. Point is, very interesting take on that. And there was like a whole bunch of crap too. It's not just one thing. So yeah, uh, be interesting to look at what all they're unlocking, what's coming next. Um, kind of interesting. 
Next up, we have Soul Mist, A Journey from Darkness to Light. This is a 5e Dungeons and Dragons compatible uh, kind of campaign adventure world set kind of thing with classes and monsters and all that. Look at the theme, guys. You guys know why I included this. The moment you saw this, a dark fantasy tabletop role-playing game. Yes, please. The art looks fantastic. The theme looks super cool. Um, they have like this arrow growth system instead of an alignment system that they're talking about. 25 new classes, 150 feats, 5 unique races, 30 new spells. There's a whole bunch of stuff. Um, you know, it talks about how it's not about good and evil. It's about struggling to live with the traumas of the past. and all. I mean, it just, it sounds cool. I love a fate idea system mechanically it's one of the things i like most about limbo eternal war um so i like seeing that there's a lot of cool stuff here they're talking about prohibited magic and uh, blood mages and warlords and pyromancers and necromancers and it guys it, it looks freaking sweet so feel free to check this out if you are into the uh tabletop rpg scene definitely it looks cool to me i i i dig everything i see in here about this so i again i i'm not doing price or anything like that i haven't looked that into it i just it looks cool wanted to point you guys towards it 14 days left next up collab this is the relaunch it has funded 120,000 from 2400 backers with 13 days still to go it looks like a very um like i want to say limited scope but i mean that in a good way it's not some huge sprawling euro that, that's going to take you five hours and is going to like take over like three tables and go into your kitchen where you're playing in your sink because you ran out of counter space. It's not that, right? This is like, like this is it. And you're building your little like uh, uh, lab over in the corner here. And then you can choose between these spaces and your worker placement stuff goes in, the, in between the spaces and you can interact with both sides. There you go. That's it. Now that you're like building cards and stuff like that. I already covered all that. I just, I really like the scope of it. Um, it's like $45, I think, for the retail pledge. Which brings me to a point here. So yeah, the retail pledge, 45 bucks, 60 bucks for the club deluxe. I always like to look into them. There's a retail or a standee version of something. I like to look at the price. So let's see, or the, how many people are backing it. You have 670 people that just want Palm Laboratory, which is their like other game. It's uh, this thing here, right? Um, so a ton of people doing that. Only 46 are getting the retail, and then 935 getting the deluxe, and then the all in another 442. So, this retail is good for 46 people. And at, at some point, we got to just admit it to ourselves if it's actually worthwhile or not. Now, if it doesn't cost them a whole lot to offer that, then fine. You just got 46 people uh, very happy. But it is always kind of interesting to see the outpouring or outcry for standees, for cheaper uh, entry points, for all this kind of stuff. I'm one of them that does this. And then see people just not care about that. There's, I want the deluxe version anyway. I'll be paying them more. You saw that was Marvel Zombicide. Just look at how many people are backing each pledged here, and you'll see how popular that giant $200 miniature really is. I mean, it's, it's insane. It, it's just crazy. Sky Tier Horde looks like a cool game. Alex said it's kind of like Hearthstone, but physical. It has solo, it has co-op. I'm interested in the co-op. It has a, 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 a competitive version as well. It looks, looks tight. They're investing in the IP. It looks good. The 3,200 backers, two, almost $250,000 funded. They're doing great there. There's still only 42 hours to go. It might be running by the time I post this. So check in the description below. I'll link to it either way, but you'll have to see if it's actually still running or not. Next up, we have the Dice Tower 2022. Three days left on here, so right at the very end. Again, if you want some cool promos, if you want some uh, uh, um, interesting uh, pieces or uh, game bags or dice or anything, they got a whole bunch there. Go and support content creators like the Dice Tower. They're doing a lot for the industry, a lot for um, setting up a review uh, industry in this um you know, industry that doesn't really have one otherwise. So it's really kind of just people here for the most part. Um, and I think that's awesome. I think that's great. And I wish them the best of luck. They broke 300,000. So congrats to them on that. And so we have Gardens of Fire. I already shared this a little bit with you. Um, it's at 61,000 from 284 backers. Um, again, back at at you know just just know you're getting into a very 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 indie experience so uh just be aware there's gonna be bumps along the way it's not as confident as something like marvel zombies that's guaranteed to get to your door um unless it's called true Von legends like it, it it's it's it is what it is right so it's low funding uh they're offering uh, quite a bit like there's a lot here which is cool but uh, this is a lot of stuff that they're offering 
for for you know not not the highest amount of backers not the highest amount of pledges so it, it, it is concerning there's only 50 hours to go too so um feel free to check it out in the link below it definitely looks unique i wish them the best of luck they have a lot to overcome from a, a, a unfortunate company name to some other kind of failed attempts and stuff like that so they got some hurdles to go through but uh so did archon and they're doing well right now uh so did several other companies that just keep improving as long as we see improvement I'm all for it. We should give companies multiple chances to improve and not just write them off instantly. I think that's silly. Next up, Total War, the board game. Look, I think it looks boring, but $402,000, they are doing great. That's only from 2,000 backers, by the way. It's because they have a ton of like uh, add-ons and stuff. You can see all the boxes here right now. Most of these are paid add-ons, actually. And uh, so, again, I apologize for the voice, by the way. So, uh, yeah, the people that are into this are really into this, and I think that's awesome. It's not what I wanted from a Rome board, Total War board game, and I think people misunderstood when I said hate. I wanted, like, a skirmish kind of thing like that. What I meant is I wanted a um, place where my units had a very important uh, positioning and movement system like the video game as well as the high-level stuff. Uh, the high level map mode. They have the high level map mode. Uh, their 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 combat thing is abstracted out into some card. I don't even necessarily. I don't need dice. So like that's not what I'm asking for. I just wanted the kind of the tactical uh, depth of like a Warhammer skirmish kind of game where you're moving your units around and positioning them and flanking and doing all this other kind of stuff that you can do in the video game and the board game. And they don't have that. It's way too abstract. It's just a line of. A line of cards so for me it's not my thing but a lot of people are really digging it and if you are they have a ton of stuff for it uh so just be aware those are going to be some add-ons right you can see right now the different pledge levels and stuff so um a lot of a lot of numbers here so just just fyi be prepared for that so we have ravaged star armies of the veil touched this funded uh, pretty much instantly, 248,000 from 880. So you can see the, the, the difference there, right? Only a few more backers, but way higher price. And so that higher price raises that total a lot because that means every single one of those people are pledging that much more. Hence the $30 increase for half a million dollars for Marvel Zombies. That's just kind of how it works, right? It propagates out just like a YouTube video, right? You may get a little bit, but then when you get thousands or millions of views, it, it adds up. Quite, quite quickly, right? So uh, yeah, again, not my style. I don't like painting these. Um, they look very pretty. They definitely look cool. Um, I think, I, I don't know how I feel about seeing them on a tabletop. Um, I like the tanks and stuff like that. Stuff like this, I struggle to, like there's so many spikes coming out. I don't know where the shield starts and where the shield ends kind of thing. So I struggle with that, looking at it on like a tabletop. On a board game, I think it works a bit better. You typically don't have so many units and stuff like that. So it's kind of interesting. I do love these tanks. So these tanks look freaking sweet. So, and a lot of the monsters, I think, look really cool as well. But uh, yeah, just, it, it, I think they look really great as renders, as really great as display pieces. Maybe not so much tabletop for me, but other people can obviously invest in that and uh, enjoy it to the full extent that they can. So, all right guys, that is it. That is a whole bunch of information for you guys to go over. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll be talking again with uh, another news video looking into February here soon. I actually have a 3D print news video I'm gonna be making. I have my celestial details video that's coming up very soon. Be on the lookout for that. Subscribe if you wanna see that, by the way. Plus reviews, unboxings, all that coming up very, very soon. Kingdoms for Lord on the way, guys. All right, take care, guys. Bye.